Ian Seegers, I'm Nick. Cool Master's got a brand new redesigned third generation dual chamber AIO, the ML360 Illusion. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install it in an AMD AIM4 base system. Now, this video is only for demonstration purposes. Please watch the whole video or use the chapters to skip to a section of the video before asking any questions because I'm probably going to answer them in this video anyway. This video is also not a review. Every system, motherboard, case, and fan placement and setup is different, so make sure you research what will fit in your case before buying any parts for your PC builds. Let's get into it. Make sure you watch the entire video before asking questions or use the chapters because chances are I'm going to answer those inevitable questions in this video anyway, so let's start off by answering some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the ASUS X570 ROG Dark Hero 8. The case used is the Fantex Eclipse P400A and the CPU is the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a discussion about pricing, performance or availability of any parts whatsoever. Yes, the fan placement in this video is correct. It depends on your case and the clearances in your case. Yes, the radiator orientation is correct for this type of installation. When a 360mm AIO is at the front or it's front mounted, the tubes are typically at the top. This is to do with tube length, PSU cutouts and clearances. This orientation on a 360mm AIO will not kill your pump. Repeat, this will not kill your pump. Yes, this cooler and fans have RGB and it's addressable RGB. No, your motherboard does not require RGB to use this cooler. Yes, you can put whatever fans you like on this cooler. It doesn't matter. You want to put brown and orange and green and purple Noctua fans, go right ahead. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for installation is included in the box, otherwise I wouldn't show it. Yes, it will work with almost every single AM4 motherboard and CPU combo that you're gonna ask about in the comments from the launch of Ryzen into the foreseeable future. Yes, this will work with AuraSync, Mystic Light, Polychrome RGB and RGB Fusion if you connect it directly to the motherboard. Yes, the thermal paste is included, no, you do not need to use the included controller for lighting. You can use your motherboard's 5 volt ARGB header if you've got one. No, you do not have to fill the cooler up with any type of fluid. You don't need to maintain it at all. You don't need to do anything. You just use it as it is. All right, let's see what's in the box and how to install it. All right, let's take a sticky beak and see what's in the box for the ML360 Illusion. Now, I've already used this cooler before, so it's not quite in brand new condition. However, everything that comes with this is included. This is a uh, bag full of all of the mounting gear and the RGB controller. Now, I'm not gonna be covering Master Plus in this video. I will show you how to connect the RGB controller. However, at the time of filming, the software is in such a bad state that it's kind of pointless to use it at all. The only reason why I'm bringing any attention to this at all is because Cooler Master needs to fix Master Plus and actually make it good. Okay, moving on. There is three of the MF120 Halo fans. These are addressable RGB. Here's the cooler itself. It's got a 360 millimeter radiator with that new dual chamber third gen pump that I was mentioning a little bit earlier on in the intro. I just want to show you this as well. The logo on the pump top can be rotated. However, kind of pointless for an AM4 installation considering you can only install this one way. Here's the Intel backplate. Now this is for an Intel installation, which we'll cover in another video and not this one. There's also the AIM4 mounting hardware, which we will be using in this video, which I'll show you how to install. Some people like these brackets and this way to install coolers. For me personally, I don't care. It's the same for either way. So, you know, regardless, it doesn't matter. There's also a tube of Master Gel Pro Thermal Compound, which we will be using in this video as well. There's the Intel mounting brackets that are for LGA 1200 and uh, 20XX sockets. There's also four of these screws to mount the brackets to the pump top itself. This is all of the Intel insulation hardware, which we won't be using in this video at all, obviously, because this is an AM4 only guide. There's 12 thumb screws. These thumb screws are for mounting the fans to the radiator. 
I quite like using these. In fact, you see me use those in a lot of builds. There's also 12 screws to mount the radiator to the top of the case if you are top mounting this cooler, which we will not be doing in this case because it's not compatible. There's also a three-way PWM splitter cable as well as the USB cable that plugs into a USB header on your motherboard and the controller and the four-way addressable RGB splitter for the fans and the pump top. There's SATA power connector for the controller as well. And this is the end that plugs into the controller itself. All right, that's enough of the stuff that comes with it. Let's get into installation. This is everything that we're going to need for mounting for an AM4 based installation. So we've got thermal paste, the two AM4 brackets, the four screws to mount those AM4 brackets to the bottom of the pump top, and the 12 thumb screws to mount the fans to the radiator. The first thing though is remove the label before installing, otherwise you'll be in a world of hate for your thermals. I always recommend doing this first. I kept the sticker from when I originally used this cooler just so I could show you this clip. Rightio, let's get to the bracket installation. Now locate both of these brackets. These are the AM4 brackets. You'll notice this little notch cut out here this notch lines up with another notch that is on top of the pump top itself. So just be aware of these two notches and what you want to do is then line them up together and you'll see it will kind of slot in. Locate the four screws. There's only four of these in the box. And what you want to do is from the bottom of the pump top on the cold plate side, fasten the bracket to the pump top itself. And you'll want to repeat this for every single corner. Look, I'm going to show you this one more time with the other bracket. Put the bracket on the top of the pump top, making sure those notches line up. And then you want to screw in from the cold plate side upwards to fasten those brackets to the top of the pump top. And with some luck, it should look a little something like this. Now, I'm going to do something that I haven't done in these installation videos. Here's a hot tip. You'll notice that these thumb nuts, they uh, move up and down and can be quite annoying to fasten up at a later time. What you want to do is push them down to the bottom thread and give it about half a turn because it's going to be a lot easier for installation later. And I'm going to show you this in a sec. Okay, these 12 thumb screws, what we're going to do is mount the radiator to the front of the case. In this case, we'll be putting the radiator on the inside and mounting the fans to the outside, then putting the front panel back over the top. Get the thumb screw, put it through the hole on the fan, making sure you align the holes up with the radiator. And what you want to do then is rinse and repeat that process until you've got all of the fans mounted to the front of the case. Now, again, this is only applicable for this case. And once you've mounted everything, Pass the PWM fan cables through to the back. This is going to make it a lot easier to plug stuff in and cable manage a little bit later on in the video. Although we're not really covering cable management in this video at all. Locate the RGB splitter cable. I'm going to show you why we're doing this in this order now, right? This makes a lot more sense a little bit later in the video. Locate the little RGB cables coming off the fans. Now, both of the cables from the fans will eventually need to be plugged in. Plug each of the RGB cables from the fan into the splitter, making sure to rinse and repeat that process for all three fans. And when you're done, there will be one spare connector and that connector is for the pump top, which we'll get to after we've installed the pump top on the CPU. Now, here's another hot tip. We get a lot of people saying that they can't fit the front panel of the P400A on once they've put the fans on the outside. And you'll see this gap here in the panel. Now, here's hot tip number two. Loosen up all of your fans, slide the radiator up, Tighten all of your fan screws back up and look what happens. Ready? Front panel goes on without any issues, right? No panel gap whatsoever. You're good to go with the P400A. We're going to plug in the three-way PWM fan split up because it's going to make it a lot easier later on in the video. You'll notice there are a bunch of fan headers on the top of this board in particular. CPU opt, CPU fan and AIO pump. You'll want to plug the three-way splitter in. I usually feed this in from the back of the case, plug it into the CPU fan header, all right? And we're good to move on. Locate the tube of the Master Gel Pro Cooler Master Thermal Compound, and we're gonna apply it to the IHS on the top of the CPU. Now, this is open for debate. This can be done a few different ways, but I would recommend doing about this much thermal paste 
on the Z or the Z of Ryzen and it gives a pretty good spread and a good way to aim for the center of the chip itself. Right, what you want to do is lower it on, but making sure you clip one edge on first. I usually clip the top end in first and then lower it down over the other bracket. Come on, Nick, lower it down. And you'll notice that when I push it down, it just clips in and I don't have to worry about it not mounting. A lot of people complain about this, but this is the reason why I showed you that hot tip earlier on in the video. Now, let's take a bit of a closer look if when you drop it on, it should just clip on without being too difficult. You'll then want to thumb tighten the screw up just a little bit. You want to rinse and repeat that process on the top nut as well. Don't do it up all the way just to begin with. Evenly distribute the pressure across both of the screws and they'll eventually just stop and they'll be fully tightened and you're all done. Now what you want to do is give it a bit of a wiggle just to test that it's not moving anywhere and we can move on. You'll notice this cable coming off the pump top, this one in particular is to make the pump pump, right? And what we're going to do is locate either CPU opt or you can plug it into the AIO pump. Depending on your motherboard, this is completely motherboard dependent. I'm plugging it into CPU opt here, it doesn't really matter. And away you go and it should be ready to work. Next up, you'll want to get this cable, which is the RGB cable. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass that RGB cable through to the back. And now we're going to get into plugging in the rest of all of the components. Locate the three PWM fan connectors from each of the fans. Now these three need to be plugged in. And then the splitter that we plugged in earlier, just plug all three of these in. It doesn't matter which order you do this in, as long as they're plugged in, the fans will spin. And that's basically the idea of how this cooler works. When they're all plugged in, they should look a little something like this. Next up, we're going to plug in the RGB cable from the pump top. Now the spare cable that came off the splitter before, you'll want to plug it into that. It's the only place it will go and just clip it in. You can only plug it in one way. You can't get it wrong and you should be good to go. Now there's two ways to do RGB with this cooler. The first way I'm going to show you is plugging it directly into the motherboard. Locate okay, this end of the splitter cable, push it through to the front so we can plug it into the motherboard. Don't worry about the other connector that's coming off this. We're not going to be using it. Locate a three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard. And what we're going to do then is plug that splitter cable directly into the motherboard. And now we don't need to use the controller, but let's show you how to use the controller. Locate the USB cable. Now this will plug into the motherboard for software control. Locate a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. You want to feed that USB header cable through from the back to the front and plug that straight into your motherboard. Then we're going to locate the controller itself. And if you whip around the controller, you'll see it's got some ports on the side. There's a USB port. You want to plug the USB end in to the controller just like that. Now we're going to plug in the power. Locate the power cable. It's got a SATA or SATA power connector on one end and the other connector for the controller. Plug the one end into the controller. It can only be plugged in one way. And then you'll want to locate a SATA power connector on your power supply. Well, it comes out of your power supply rather. And what you'll want to do is then just plug that in. It can only be plugged in one way. It won't fit in another way. Once you clip it in, you should be good to go. Next up, we're going to get the end of that splitter cable again, the one that we showed for the motherboard only install. And you'll want to plug that into an available RGB connector on the controller itself. And that's basically it. And once you're done with that, you can then just stick it to your case because it's magnetic. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. But again, make sure you read the comment section because myself or someone probably would have answered your question already. And please take that into consideration before asking any questions. And I only say this in these type of guides because I just don't wanna waste your time asking a question that's already been answered. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If it helped you, let us know if it helped you and consider supporting us using the join button down below or on Patreon or getting early access on Floatplane. If you hated this video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and it feels good to do an install guide. We haven't done one in quite a while, and yeah, this is a cooler that I personally think is gonna be pretty popular over the next few months, so why not show you how to install it? Thanks for watching.